Honky Tonk Man's Intercontinental Championship record of 454 days has been broken by Gunther, <laughs> your favourite Gunther as well. Oh, oh, Gunther's great. Mm. He is really great. Yeah. I'm a huge, huge fan of Gunther. And I see why, and I'm not the only one. Because when Gunther goes on TV, people sit down and they watch his match. You know what? They'll watch his match. Because that's the way wrestling used to be. Now, I don't want somebody to say, ah, oh, Dutch, you old bastard, dinosaur, son of a whatever. But they are some people that fans will sit down to watch. Because Gunther has no fancy moves. He don't have a big drop kick. He don't have a hurricana or whatever you call it. That probably 20 years ago. All he has is he just beats the living shit out of you. And it's up to the other guy to go back and beat, beat Gunther back in return. And I remember the first time I really ever popped on him doing this was Clash at the Castle in Wales. Mm -hmm. Him and Drew McIntyre. It was, if you're not even a wrestling fan, you can sit back and say, and whoa, you can actually say, you know, they're opening up for the other guy to hit him. That's what Japan does too. But they, you know, Gunther's a pretty big guy. He's like 6'5", and Drew is too. And I think Gunther's 260. Drew is probably about the same thing, maybe a little heavier. And they got big hands. So when they come in with that chest, uh, uh, pop it's it, it's brutal so i i watch them because i'm going to see i immediately know this match is not going to be five minutes i know it's not going to be 10 minutes it's not going to be 50 it's going to be more like 20 to 25 but i can sit back and watch this match and but gunther he's he's got it his facial expressions and the way he takes his time and the way he sells. If you're just watching him without sound, you say, I mean, if you can, you know, watching wrestling anyway, you have to dispel a lot of things you've heard before. But if you were watching it just from a distance without hearing commentary or anything, it's different, totally different. So I'm glad he now has uh, one day more than the Honky Tonk Man. And Honky Tonk Man was very successful with that Intercontinental Championship. And now uh, Gunther has beat it. And so now that's his, that's his rallying cry now. I've held it so long. Now he's got something to say. And Wayne, uh, the Honky Tonk Man, he was my partner in Puerto Rico one time. He don't give a crap one way or the damn other. But but I wish they would bring Gunther and Honky Tonk in just for him to shake his hand. You broke my record. And then have Hunter just be, <laughs> Gunther just beat the crap out of him. So <laughs> and, and Wayne would do he Wayne he he don't care. But that would that would be good. So the the match with who did Gunther work with? Are you it was it was it uh, Chad Gable? Yep. And that went, what, 20 minutes or something? Yeah, it was at the main event of Raw, I think, as well. Okay, yeah. this is what I'm trying to tell people. You get a heel over. And he works with a baby face like Chad Gable. And Chad Gable loses, but he actually won. Because in by him putting up such a stiff uh, opponent, being a stiff opponent, for Gunther actually got him over. It gave him guts. And now when he's saying, I'm going after him, now that will get him over. I mean, they can put him over till the cows come home. But he putting him over d d does less uh, uh, good for him than losing to Gunther. And so when he left after Gunther beat him, the people legitimately had respect for him. And... And I, I'm glad for him because I, I, I think he was the second coming of Kurt, Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they didn't do more with Angle. Uh, and this would be a perfect time for Angle to come in 
and kind of coach him just from the three weeks or whatever it takes. And I think they would get that over big time. Are you, you see, I, in my mind, would actually think that Honky Tonk Man is sort of bothered by it because, I mean, that's been his sort of rallying cry, as you say, for the past 35 years. I'm the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. I've held the belt longer than anyone else. And that's sort of been taken away from him now. But uh, it can't take it away because now he can always say, I am the greatest intercontinental champion of all time. Yeah. Yeah. But forget the other part, the days he held it. But if he wants to get heat, said, I held it with those these guys when it was tough, <laughs> when it wasn't his, all this acting stuff. And no, he could, he could still get heat with that. Wayne is a heat magnet anyway. Honky Tonk Man is, I mean, you can see him on the street just walking towards you and he, he'll get heat with you. <laughs> you. You know, you know that I've tried to get him on my other channel. Yeah. And I've, and I've actually wrote to him and tried to get him on this one. I've never heard a reply and I've tried several times. If I'll you, try him. If I'll you try asked, him. you never know. Well, that'd be different. So I hope different. it'd be different. I'd, I'd love to have him on. I'd love to have him on as well. Uh, just just quickly before I get off this, uh, Honky Tonk Man's record standing for 34 years. It sort of feels like The Undertaker's streak getting broken at WrestleMania in the sense it's just one of those numbers that you just always thought would be there and now it isn't. I mean, in your opinion, are all records meant to be booked to be broken in that sense? Well, that they'll probably be broken except for Bruno's. Bruno, that those eight thousand days or whatever or eight he years. Is like eight years, yeah. No, that 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 will never be broken, basically because they don't have time to do it. Uh, but the thing with Wayne and and uh, Undertaker getting their records broken, see, I just noticed within the last six eight months, or maybe a little more that they're paying attention to records a lot more than they used to. So all of a sudden, these records pop up, and it has to be exact. They have to do research on these records. Otherwise, the fans will say, no, you're wrong. And if the fans can prove them wrong, one time that would make all the WWE uh, pronouncements Bullshit to know it, it, it didn't happen. And I, I was torn about the Undertaker losing his because I've heard the whole thing was that the Undertaker was a version of Vince. He wanted to be like that. He had all this power. He would never die. And that's why I said, and this is, of course, before it, before it happened at WrestleMania before it got got broken, but I was thinking that's one record that'll never be broken because he's going to let Undertaker uh, ride it out so he can retire the, the longest reigning champion of the modern era. It didn't go, it, it didn't go like to Bruno's uh, scales. And when he, when he broke that record, nobody knew it in the, what, what uh, WrestleMania was this? Oh, was it thirty, thirty-one, something like that? I believe the story was is that it was in L.A., right? Do I? It was in L.A., I think. I'll find out. You carry on with the story. Well, but nobody in the back knew that the Undertaker was losing. But the Undertaker didn't tell nobody, and Paul Heyman, of course, didn't tell anybody. Vince didn't tell anybody. Creative may have known it or may have not known it. So that was the best kept secret of all time. Only Vince, Undertaker, Brock, and a few more knew it. And when it happened, the fans were stunned because everybody was under the same impression I was that no, he's not going to lose that. There's no way he's going to lose that because they've all they all heard the story about he's a reincarnation of uh, mm. the Undertaker's reincarnation of Vance, his imagination, 
and he, he, he'll never lose. So when he lost, the people didn't know what to think. See, that's the beauty about wrestling. All of a sudden, you think one thing and the other thing happens. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't even considered seriously that Brock would win. It was New Orleans. I rem yeah, I remember exactly because New that Orleans. was the one where yep, Steve I Austin, The Rock, and Hulk Hogan came out. And that's when Hulk Hogan kept saying he was yep. in the Silver Dome instead of the Superdome. And then people started booing. And then he started singing Hulkster in Heaven. And then people started cheering. <laughs> and then Steve Austin came out. I remember it. Yeah. I remember it vividly. Yeah. And and Steve Austin came out there. What? What? That ain't that damn Superdome. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? What was a dome called in uh, Detroit? Was the name of it? Silver Dome. Silver Dome, and this was a Super Dome. Yeah. Well, I actually went out at one point on the floor to watch a little bit of Undertaker and Brock, and good match. But that finish, it it, it stunned the people, and all of a sudden they got quiet, like what the hell? What are they doing? See, that's the beauty of wrestling. Sometimes if you can swerve them into one way of thinking and then bring it back just a little bit, people don't know what to think. I want, I want to ask you this then. So you said you, you, you were on the floor watching it. So is there like a special like paddock, you know, for the performers that you can actually watch? Or do you basically have to just go in with the fans to watch it? No, you just walk out the door and you got to, you, you got some bleachers there. You know, nobody's, nobody's going to see you much anyway. And, you know, you, you got the floor here and you got the two doors on either side. I mean, this is the whole, you know, a, arena. But I stood outside the doors and I watched it. I didn't watch the finish, but I watched part of the, part of the match. But I did see all the, the, the video of the people like, what the hell? He, and they were looking at each other like, can you explain this to me? And nobody can explain it. It's just, it is, or it was, what it was. You know, some people so, went home. Some fans actually went home after that because they were so unhappy. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I also want to say this briefly. Paul Heyman was fantastic in that. Oh, because yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he's just like, he did that. Uh, oh, my God. Yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah. Paul uh, is good. Paul is good. 